All right. If we're going to talk about electrostatics, we need to know what an electric charge is. <laughs> and so that's where we'll start. As we talk about electrostatics, our major focus is going to be on the idea of electromagnetic force, uh, because that's so crucial to uh, so many um, ways that the physical world functions. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to know uh, about a physical quantity called charge. Um, this is uh, a quantity in the same sense that mass is a quantity. There's no sort of explanation outside of um, itself about what charge is. Charge is charge uh, in the same way that mass uh, is just mass. Uh, all charge uh, in stable matter is carried by uh, electrons and protons, two of the three molecular building blocks. Um, and each of those uh, building blocks has a unit charge. Um, an electron has a negative unit charge, QE, and a proton has a positive unit charge. And the unit charge itself um, is a small fraction of the unit that we use to describe charge on a human scale, which is a coulomb. And so one unit of charge um, a basic unit of charge is equal to about 10 to the 19th um, or uh, uh, 1 over 10 to the 19th coulombs. Uh, so the coulomb obviously is much, much, much larger uh, than the unit charge. Uh, it doesn't matter too much on a human scale, but it's important to recognize that stable matter uh, always has a charge equal to an integer multiple of that unit of charge QE. Uh, in other words, you can't have a half a unit of positive or negative charge, even at the quantum level. Uh, and that'll make uh, important differences when we talk a little bit about quantum physics uh, towards the end of the semester. So how do we think about having a charged object versus a non-charged object? Uh, well, here we're going to talk a little bit about a process uh, called induction, in which we induce charge to move from one object to another and thus give it a um, either a negative overall net charge or a positive overall net charge. So most matter at you know in contact with the ground is going to be uh, a, have an, a zero charge that is it has an equal number of protons and electrons. Um, but a conducting material will allow some of those electrons to move freely, uh, throughout the material, uh, and that might be in terms of a free electron in a metal conductor, or it might be charged molecules in a fluid uh, called ions that can move around in that fluid. What that means is that you can have some of more electrons in one part of uh, the object than in the other part. So when we take a positively charged object here and we put it next to these two metal <laughs> metal balls here, whatever we're, whatever we're charging here. Um, the free electrons run race over here um, to, uh, to the positive charge because they are attracted to the opposite charge. The positive charge over here is actually not because there are positive molecules moving over here. It's just because there are more protons here that aren't going to move uh, and they've been abandoned by their electrons that moved over here. So now we have a lot of electro of negative charge here and a positive net charge over here, and that's called polarization. It's an imbalance of charges within the same material. Now, if we are um, to separate these, right, without warning these electrons that we're going to separate their mothers and fathers here, uh, you're going to end up with all those electrons still over here. Uh, and this ball over here is going to have a deficit of electrons. It's going to have more protons than electrons. That means this has a negative charge, net charge, and this has a positive net charge. And it'll stay that way even when we take this away, because there's no way for those electrons to jump back over to the place that they started in. Now, the total number of electrons and the total number of protons has to stay the same. The, the total charge within the two objects stays the same, 
Uh, it's just that sum has been shifted from one of these balls to another. So the conservation of charge says that we can't destroy charge in the same way that the conservation of mass or energy says we can't destroy mass uh, or energy. There's one other way uh, that we can talk about um, that will charge an object, and that's called the triboelectric effect. Uh, and that's uh, what you recognize from shuffling your shoes on a carpet or rubbing a balloon uh, on your sweater. Um, essentially, there are some um, uh, materials that are more attractive to electrons uh, and some that are less attractive to electrons. And so when we rub those two things together, um, even when they're touching, when normally we'd think about in a conductor, the electrons would spread out. Um, here, they're going to be more attracted to this amber uh, blob here than to the cloth. And so when we separate them, uh, the amber is going to have a more negative charge and the cloth will have a positive charge. Now note, the charge has been conserved, right? Uh, this one has a negative two charge. This has a plus two charge. So the overall charge uh, is still zero. Uh, 